Oh my gosh. So we're on to chapter 13. We're almost done with the book. Look. So the chapter is called Ripples. And I'm wondering what that means. So I'm already thinking in my head about what I want to pay attention to. And hopefully you are too. Um, last time I said, uh, make a prediction. So was your, oh my goodness, I wrote too fast. Proofreading, I tell you, so important. What was your prediction? Was your prediction correct? That's what I want to ask. Really, I do. Um, was your prediction correct? If not, what happened instead? It's not important whether or not it's correct or incorrect. It's to help you focus and notice details that we make these predictions, okay? Um, plus, half the time, we don't even share our predictions with others. It's just in our heads. So there's no, no quiz score to be gained here. And then what has changed? As I read chapter 13 and 14 to you in Frindle, I want you to really think about what has changed. Has the evolution of this new word changed? Has Nick's behavior changed? Has Mrs. Granger changed? Or has the way the story is being told changed? Where are we? Okay, it's going to be cool. Ripples, but life did settle back to normal in Westfield. More leaves fell, Thanksgiving came, then the first snow, then Christmas and more snow. Fall and winter seemed to calm everything down and drive everyone into their own houses. Things were calmer at Lincoln Elementary School too. Frindlemania was over, but that didn't mean the word was gone, not at all. All the kids and even some of the teachers used the new word. At first it was on purpose, then it became a habit, and by the middle of February, Frindle was just a word. Like door, or tree, or hat, people in Westfield barely noticed it anymore. But in the rest of the country, things were hopping. Frindle was on the move. In hundreds of little towns and big cities from coast to coast, kids were using the new word. And parents and teachers were trying to stop it. What had happened in Westfield happened over and over and over again. Bud Lawrence couldn't have been happier. There were Frindle shirts and sunglasses and erasers and notebooks and paper and dozens of other items. The new line of Frindles imported from Japan were a big hit. And now there was talk of selling them in Japan and Europe as well. The checks that went into Nick's trust fund got bigger and bigger. Bud opened his own factory in Westfield to make Frindle baseball caps, which created jobs for 22 people. And in March, the town council voted to put up a little sign on the post below the town's name along Route 302. It said, home of the original Frindle. And Mrs. Granger? She seemed to have given up. Or perhaps she had been ordered to. No one knew. Her poster about the forbidden word had quietly disappeared from the bulletin board. And kids were not staying after school writing sentences anymore. It was business as usual except for one thing. And here's the picture, West, um, where, Welcome to Westfield. Um, and it was established in 1796, home of the original Frindle. But life had spent, settled back to normal. I think that's a cool picture. Everyone in fifth grade got at least one word wrong on his or her spelling test each week. Every week, the first word on the top of Mrs. Granger's list was pen. And each Friday during the spelling test, every kid spelled it F-R-I-N-D-L-E. Nick was sort of a celebrity for a while. Everyone had seen him on The Late Show and on Good Morning America and two or three other TV shows. John and Chris and all his friends kept asking about what it was like to ride in a limousine. After a week or two, though, it was old news and everyone seemed to forget it and move on. The only person who couldn't quite forget about everything was Nick. What has changed? Chapter 14. Inside, Nick. On the outside, Nick was still Nick. But inside, he, it was different. Oh, sure, he still had a lot of great ideas. But now, they scared him a little. For instance, Nick learned in social studies class that people who buy stuff are called consumers. If consumers stop buying, stores and shops and restaurants go out of business. Then boom, 
a new idea hit him. All the kids loved lunchtime, but the awful part about lunch was the eating part, school food. And the food was never a surprise. You had to smell it all morning and then go to eat it. The food was always bad. Well, thought Nick, the school cafeteria is sort of a restaurant, isn't it? And the students are the consumers, right? And we don't really have to buy our lunches there, do we? Nick could see it all. He would get all the kids to bring their lunches from home every day until the ladies who made the lunches cooked better food. He was sure those women didn't cook food like that for their own families. The kids were the consumers with $1.35 in their pocket. And until the food was better, that's where their money would stay. Now, I'm pretty sure school lunches are a lot more expensive now, but that's okay. Great idea. Nick was sure it would work and he got all excited about it. But then Nick remembered what had happened with Frindle. It stopped him cold. He was sure that if all the kids stopped buying lunch sooner or later, someone would figure out that it was all Nick Allen's idea. He would get in trouble. People would write about it in the newspaper. The principal would call his parents. Anything could happen. So for the first time in his life, Nick kept a good idea to himself. He never even told John or Chris. So this is a turning point, right? Something has changed fundamentally about this character. Right? He's showing us his inner thinking, and we can see that he's not jumping on an idea because of a past experience. And that changed Nick. His mom was the first to notice. Are things okay at school, honey? She asked one day in early March. He had seemed kind of down, a little sad. It worried her. Sure, said Nick. Everything's fine. Everything's okay with your friends? They haven't been hanging around here very much. Honest, mom. Everything's fine. It's winter. Everyone's really busy with hockey and basketball. That's all. And Nick went to his room and shut the door. Mrs. Granger noticed the change too. The clever little rascal who had looked her in the eye and said, but I really don't have a frindle with me. That boy wasn't in her class anymore. Now a quieter, more careful Nicholas Allen came into class every day. He did all his work perfectly, didn't speak unless she called on him, and didn't laugh and joke with his friends like he used to. School would be over in a few months, and it seemed like there was nothing she could do to help him. Toward the end of the year, Nick remembered the letter that Mrs. Granger had asked him to sign on the back when the Frindle business was just getting started. The chess game was over, so he was expecting to get that letter from Mrs. Granger any day. But all spring, it didn't come, so he thought she must have forgotten about it. Nick was afraid to bring it up all up again, but he was dying of curiosity. So on the last day of school, Nick knocked on Mrs. Granger's classroom door. She was straightening up the textbooks on the bookcases below the windows. Without turning around, she sang out, come in. Nick said, hi, Mrs. Granger. Mrs. Granger stood up and turned to face him. Oh, it's you, Nicholas. I'm so glad you stopped by. I've been meaning to talk to you, and this will save me having to send you a letter this summer. Nick gulped and said, that's what I came for the letter. Mrs. Granger looked puzzled for half a second and then she said, oh, that letter. Then she paused. You will recall, Nicholas, that I said I would send you that letter when all this was over. And it's not over. It's not? Nick tilted his head to one side and asked, when will it be over? Mrs. Granger smiled and said, oh, believe me, Nicholas, you'll know when it's over. I wanted to talk to you about something else. She walked across the room and stood about two feet from him. Nick had grown during the year and their eyes were almost on the same level. Nick noticed that the, uh, the eyes were softer, but just as powerful. I've noticed that you've been very quiet for the past few months. You know, Nicholas, you didn't do anything wrong this year. I know a lot of things happened and a lot of things were said and you must have had some difficult days here and there. But your idea was a good idea. And I have been very proud of the way you behaved most of the time. Nick was embarrassed, but Mrs. Granger kept on talking. And Nicholas, you have great things to do in this life. I'm absolutely sure you do. And you mustn't let a few hard days trick you into clamming up. Then Mrs. Granger reached out and shook Nick's hand and looked him in the face. 
Her eyes were turned up brighter than Nick had ever seen them before. She said, Nicholas Allen, I have enjoyed having you as a student. Now you go out there and have a wonderful summer. And I expect to hear remarkable things about you, young man. Mrs. Granger watched Nick start to leave. But before he got to the door, he turned and said, thanks, Mrs. Granger, you have a great summer too. Then he grinned and said, and don't forget to buy some new Frindles for next year. Thanks to this, his little talk with Mrs. Granger, along with a healthy dose of summer vacation, Nick made a full recovery. He was proud that he had made up a new word, and he enjoyed thinking about all the commotion it had stirred up. That one little word had made fifth grade a year to remember. Before he started sixth grade, Nick was Nick again, and all through junior high and high school and college, he proved it. For example, two years later, all the school cafeterias in town were serving delicious food at least four days a week, all because of Nick, the consumer. And the state superintendent of schools had made a special trip to Westfield to learn why this little town had the most successful school lunch program in the state. And in high school, well, the stories about Nick's other adventures could go on and on and on. But that would delay the end of this story, the one that started when Nick was in fifth grade. Because the end of this story came later, 10 years later. And that was happening to Nick's, and what was happening to Nick's word during those 10 years. Nothing fancy, nothing exciting. Words don't work that way. Words either get used or they don't. And Frindle was being used more and more. It was becoming a real word. All right. So that was chapter 14. We have another chapter to go. Maybe two? I don't remember. Huh. One more chapter to go. And I look forward to sharing it with you another time. But in the meantime, think about what has changed for Nicholas. We just saw him kind of come all the way around to a different place. And now we're going to hear about the end of this story. All right. Keep reading. Bye.